the first Sunday after the Epiphany. We also celebrate the feast day of the baptism of our Lord. Our service can be found on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer and also in your service bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord of gods, 
Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff, he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. You are my beloved. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In this 
first Sunday after Epiphany, our gospel reading today tells us about another Epiphany, another Epiphany event, the baptism of our Lord Jesus. The first Sunday after Epiphany is always the feast of the baptism of our Lord. A time where the voice of God from heaven declares that this is my son. That Jesus is the son of God. This declaration or announcement is clearly stated in all four of the Gospels. Which means that's pretty important. We can hear the voice of God make a similar declaration at the event of the virgin birth, the transfiguration, and also at the resurrection. There are three significant points made in our gospel reading about the baptism of Jesus. These three points are also significantly relevant to our own baptism. In today's story, we find God's declaration and assurance that Jesus is the Son of God. We witness the coming of the Holy Spirit descending upon Jesus. And we hear God call Jesus his beloved, in whom he is well pleased. The baptism of the Lord tells us something about our own baptism. First, as God has historically and publicly declared that Jesus is his son, so has God, through the baptism in Jesus, declare us to be children of God. To be children of God. Through baptism, we are adopted as children of God. We become the adopted sons and the adopted daughters of God. Through baptism, we are, in a true sense, grafted in this first family of Israel. Without distinction and with full benefits from the love and care of God. And secondly, when Jesus was baptized, the Spirit of God came down upon him. The Spirit was the very presence of God. Now this was the same Spirit that was present in creation itself. It was the breath that created the world. It was the spirit that was brooding above the waters, ready to create life in the world. This was the same spirit that anointed the prophets and empowered the kingships. This spirit came down to anoint and empower the ministry of Jesus. Through the invocation of the Holy Spirit in our own baptism. The same Spirit of God comes down to transform us into a new creation, into a new relationship with God through Christ Jesus. The same Spirit that descended upon Jesus to empower his ministry is the same anointing Spirit that is sent to us to empower us in our lives and to empower our ministry. In our baptism, the Holy Spirit comes within us and we become a member of a community of the Spirit. We are a member of the community of Spirit. By the way, that's one of the reasons why we say the Nicene, the Nicene Creed, we have we. we. We say we because we are a part of the community of Spirit, of one Spirit. It is this Spirit and in this community of spirit, that we grow spiritually. We grow spiritually, certainly when God communes to us individually, but also as a community of spirit, as you are here today. That's how we grow, not just by ourselves, but with others within a community. It is in this spirit that we find the strength and the power to face and meet our daily challenges. Again, the Holy Spirit empowers us 
When I'm in my prayer time, I, I'm, I know the Holy Spirit is there with me. But not like when the Holy Spirit is in community. That's where we are superpowered for strength, encouragement, instruction for those challenges ahead. <clears throat> challenges like challenges that we find in our broken relationships, in the conflicts of life, in our many tasks and roles that we have to fill. And some of us have many hats, many responsibilities, the pressing responsibilities that we feel. The Holy Spirit comes to help us to face aging, to face the sickness in ourselves or others, to face challenging jobs, to face the challenges of parenthood, to face injustice and corruption, to face failure or rejection to face the challenges in our individual and collective ministries. And yes, to face the challenges of a pandemic. When the Spirit of God is inside you and those around you, there is power to face the world and to accomplish things far greater than we can do by ourselves or just for yourselves. The third point is that God called Jesus his beloved. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Now to call someone beloved suggests a very special relationship. It is a relationship where there is great familiarity and intimacy, where there is a deep devotion and great favor. As God has called Jesus, his beloved, so has God called us, the children of God, through baptism, his beloved. And Jesus himself calls us his beloved. God tells us, you are my beloved. You are my beloved sons. You are my beloved daughters. Through our baptism and faith, we are transformed to become God's beloved. God is well pleased with Jesus. God is well pleased or delighted in his creation, made after his own image, us. And he is especially delighted when his special creation returns to him through baptism as a child of God in his own family. In this gospel reading, we find God affirming a special relationship with Jesus, but also with us. As he calls us his own, and as he calls us his beloved, in whom he delights. We also find that God sends the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, to empower us and to enlighten us in our lives and also in our mission, our ministries. And folks, truthfully, the coming of the Holy Spirit as it was to empower Jesus' ministry, the true creation of the Holy Spirit given to us is to empower our ministry. Now, we enjoy the benefits of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is certainly meant for our comfort and, and our sense of security and for our individual strength. But ultimately, the coming of the Holy Spirit was to strengthen us so that we could go out and do ministry like Jesus So it's kind of a means to an end. We, we get to enjoy the blessings of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But we do so so that we might bless others with the Holy Spirit.
That is Christian discipleship. That is who we are. So we have to be careful that we don't just uh, uh, just nurture or just surround ourselves with the Holy Spirit and all its goodness, but that we share that goodness with others. We don't just bathe in its luxuries, in its luxurious, but we do so so that we're energized to go out and to serve God in our various ministries. God sends his Holy Spirit to empower us and to enlighten us in our lives and mission. God also confirms and he affirms a special relationship with us. His beloved. But folks, with this relationship goes responsibility. And I think that's true with any relationship. It comes with certain responsibility. Like with Jesus, this is a relationship with responsibility. The responsibility of obedience and using the gift of the Holy Spirit to strengthen our lives so that we may be empowered in our ministries or our mission for God in the world. May we live in the confidence that our life and our efforts will be pleasing to God as his beloved. May it be so with you. May it be so with us. And especially this community of spirit. It has been a tradition in the Anglican Church uh, to renew our own baptismal vows during baptisms and also during the feast day of the baptism of our Lord. So please turn to page 304 so that we may renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father. believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge 
us to living in the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teachings and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. I will with God's help. The prayers of People Form 3 are found in your service bulletin and on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. Remembering especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Pope Francis of the Roman Church, Michael, our presiding bishop, the bishops and ministers of the Episcopal Church and the Anglican community, Phoebe, our bishop, and Father Terry, our priest. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Remembering especially Joe, our president, Bill, our governor, and the mayors of Shelby County and the surrounding areas, we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nation of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Remembering especially Kathy, Jessica, Stacy, Robert, Bonnie, Jason, and the Curlin family. Have compassion on those who suffer from grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially James Byron Ponder. Let the light of perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into the kingdom of joy. That we will also come and share in your heavenly kingdom. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Cavalry Memphis. We pray for the West Tennessee Haiti Partnership Mission. We pray for the village mission in Liberia, Africa. We pray for peace in Jerusalem. We pray for peace among all nations. We pray for peace for our own nation. Yes, Lord. We pray for the protection and comfort of all who serve this country in foreign and domestic lands, especially Trevor Hawley and Jacob Stevens. We pray for Christians that are being persecuted throughout the world. The altar flowers are given to the glory of God by Mary Shardy in honor of Elizabeth's birthday. Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating a birthday, especially Gannon Buckmaster, Debbie Nelson, and Ray Harville. Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating an anniversary this week. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. give thanks for all the blessings in this life. Amen. Amen. O 
Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Our confession can be found on page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer and also in your service bulletin. Together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you into eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also peace, everyone. Peace. So glad you're here. Peace. Peace. So you know you get big brownie points with the priest and with the big guy upstairs too. I do hear people, and of course there are legitimate reasons why people should not come during during you know inclement weather. Uh, but I do hear, do hear people say, "Oh, it's just so inconvenient to uh, you know to get ready and to go through the, the weather." And I'm thinking, this is my Jewish mother. I'm thinking, you know, God is like works overtime and it's got to be inconvenient for him to be present with me all the time and if he can be present to us all the time we can be weather through a little inconvenience to get here so bless you all for being here and uh, we will uh, love when everybody is able to be back together especially uh, dealing with this pandemic time so glad you all are here a few announcements. Well, we want to welcome uh, our organist, Angela Saunders, who's here uh, with us again uh, as our uh, guest organist. We wish she would stay longer than just being a guest, but uh, we're, we're really thankful for her providing music for us today. The healing service will uh, continue next Wednesday at 1210. If you have a chance to attend that service, please do. That's such a sweet service. It's, uh, it's a short one, but it's where we lift up uh, uh, this parish, uh, our loved ones, and even concerns of ourselves up to the Lord. We began our adult education class uh, on courage. How appropriate uh, for the beginning of a new year uh, to talk about Christian courage the discipleship of courage. And so I'm really looking forward to this six part series that would lead us all the way up to Lent, uh, talking about courage. And the author uh, 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 looks at the courage of Christ as, uh, as kind of a re reflection of uh, how and where we can get our own courage. How appropriate again, especially during this pandemic time. I and mean, goodness gracious, it takes courage to walk out of the house these days, doesn't it? Uh, 
Um, today is the uh, last Sunday, at least I should say officially is the last Sunday of our Manor House project uh, where we've been gathering uh, clothing, uh, blankets and sleeping bags and so forth for the Manor House. Uh, the Manor House is a ministry to the homeless that we have supported for quite some time. Uh, and it doesn't mean that you can't continue to bring goods. We, we usually keep an area open for you to uh, bring goods by throughout the, the, the year or throughout the season. Uh, but, but officially, we're uh, going to end our campaign. And um, I'm thinking that uh, the poors are probably a little glad about that because they've been making a lot of trips <laughs> to that Midtown area. Um, pardon me? Oh, yes, I see. It, it was filled up again. Those are good problems to have. And if you need help, by the way, let us, let us know. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everybody, for uh, your generous responding to that ministry. And as you know, especially after last week, those folks needed uh, those warm clothing. If you continue to drop things by, we'll make sure that they get there. And also, the uh, food bank, uh, more than ever, please uh, continue to be mindful of that ministry as well as our prescription bottle ministry. Uh, that uh, basket will still be in the parish hall for you to make your deposits there. We've got a few extra slots for our altar flowers. If you want to donate the altar flowers in, um, in, in honor of a loved one, uh, we've got some slots next year uh, that are open, so please do so because they will uh, continue to fill up rapidly. And probably my last time to remind you to pick up your liturgical calendar. In fact, if you had your liturgical calendar, you might know that today was the baptism of our Lord. It does, it, it does identify all of our feast days and the colors, which we're now in the season of white. We'll change to green next Sunday. Uh, which I still can't figure out. I don't understand why we don't keep white during the Epiphany. <laughs> but anyway, I didn't, I didn't make those rules. Um, please do pick up your, your copy. There, there should be copies in the back of the church and also in the foyer area. This is your last chance to pick up your poinsettias. Uh, uh, Betty has managed to keep a little moisture in the, in the soil so that they're still beautiful. And in fact, they still look like, they don't look real. Those, those petals are so velvetly beautiful. Uh, but the dude who picked those up today, because we will have to uh, probably dispose of them after today. And also pick up your pledge boxes. Uh, uh, in the parish hall, you'll see them laid out. There are boxes with your names on them and your numbers. Uh, even if you do not pledge by using the pledge boxes or, or the, the pledge envelopes, please pick up your box so that we know that you have picked them up. And um, that's up to you how, you how you give, but if you can pick those boxes up, that will, that will help us. Are there any other announcements that we might have? Yes, sir. Yes. Men's Club meeting on Thursday night at the Olympic Steakhouse this time. Uh, we're reprising from December, uh, but uh, we'll have two or two or three special entrees at a lower price, and uh, we'll have the uh, comp line and everything. So please Good. make it a point to attend. At 6.30 at Olympic Steakhouse in Arlington. If you men or any of you men are interested, just give us a call at the office and we'll direct you in the right direction. Any other announcements? Do we have any birthday celebrations today? Any birthdays, even if you've missed yours? How about anniversaries? Any anniversary celebrations? Blessings? Uh, I'm right up right down. There we go. Never miss an opportunity for a blessing. I need it. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> especially. <laughs> 40 years. 40. 40. I wasn't there after that. But. <laughs> Maybe that's why you're still married. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. From the grace
first guy. I'm just teasing. Let's pray. The Lord be with you. Gracious God, Father of all, we give thanks for another year of these lives shared in human love and in your love that never fails. Bless this couple in all that is yet to come, confirming and strengthening them in their vows which they have made to one another in your name. Keep them faithful until they must part in death and bring them together at last into eternal life. Amen. I bless you with this holy oil in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I bless you with this holy oil in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. Thank you. You want me to double dose it? It <laughs> 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 I'm just teasing, Bill. I know. <laughs> no, he needs it. Any others? <laughs> he needs it. Let me go back. Okay. Let us remember the words of our Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give and to give of ourselves than to receive. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give him thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Just a word to our guests and visitors. We're so glad that you're here with us today. Uh, please feel free. Uh, in fact, a heartfelt invitation to come and take communion. Uh, if you're a baptized Christian, this table is for you as well. Please come and be with us. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you with everlasting life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you with everlasting life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you with everlasting life.
those that could not be here today and for all of those that we have prayed for, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to keep them into eternal life. Amen. 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 Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his countenance upon you and bring you peace. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you for the rest of this Sabbath day, for your upcoming week, during our joyful Epiphany season, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.